It's surprisingly cold for the time of year and it's raining, so I thought it would be the perfect day to build a fire. I cheated. I had to use a fire starter because all my wood was damp and I feel like it's already starting to kind of fizzle out. So thriving. So while I still can enjoy this fire as my video background, I wanted to go over the story that I'm going to be working on for the next few months. If you watched my author journal building video, you will have seen I made a whole section of that journal for a story called This Book is for October. Another thing I mentioned in that video is that I specifically am writing this story as a gift for my sister to give to her this October of 2020. And while the story does have a plot, it is mostly just an exploration of an aesthetic. I wanted to give her something that would make her feel the way Hallmark movies make you feel at Christmas, you know? Is the gingerbread competition necessary for the plot? Probably not, but it's still aesthetic, and so you include the gingerbread competition. And I wanted that for her and for me for Halloween. And since I have no intention of ever publishing this book or really ever going beyond the zero slash first draft that I'm going to be working on for the next few months, I felt like this would be a great story to be very open about my whole writing process. So sharing the title, sharing the characters' names, sharing big plot points because my sister doesn't watch this channel. There's like a freedom here to talk about it at length and in detail that I feel I don't have with my other stories that I am hoping eventually to one day publish either traditionally or independently. So this video is really just an introduction to that story. I'm gonna give you the general plot idea. I'm going to give you a run through of the Scrivener file that I have and show all the work that I have already and all the work I'm hoping to accomplish. Today is Monday, so it's the start of the week that I'm going to be doing a week-long writing experiment, trying to be a little more regimented and build a writing habit something I have been trying to do for many a moon and yet somehow continually fail at. But, you know, 80th time is the charm, is what they always say. Speaking of charms, this book is about witches, because it's about Halloween. And I know what you're gonna say, oh my god, everyone and their mother is doing a witch story. And my response to that is good. I love witches please everybody do a witch story. I want to read more witch stories. Thank you. But seriously, if you have a witch story and you're willing to share it, send it. I love, I love witch stories. As for the general aesthetic of the story, the overall location takes place in a cottage in the woods. And wouldn't you know it, I am currently residing in a cottage in the woods. So I feel like it's sort of perfect. There are three sisters because of course, because it's always three. Also, it's because I have three sisters. No, what am I talking about? I have two sisters. I am one of a triplet of sisters. We are not triplets though. Do not get confused. So I find it's actually fairly easy to write the dynamic between the three sisters because it's slightly modeled off of our own, although altered. There's a little bit more tension between the middle sister and the oldest sister. Um, that doesn't really exist in real life and it's because you need conflict in a story even though I said this story was all about aesthetic but you gotta have just like a little bit of conflict. Yes there are three sisters who are all witches that belong to a greater kind of regional coven. Um, they are all in their either mid to late 20s or early 30s and within the past year their mother who has been the matriarch of the family has passed away and the middle sister has stayed at home very much a home body while the other two sisters have kind of flown the coop and are making their own families and are independent the middle sister she lives in a little cottage in the woods and one night a stranger knocks on her door it's the inciting incident kind of again i really can't stress enough how loose the plot is because it's really about the aesthetic. Timing wise, the story happens from seven days before Halloween all the way up to Halloween. And it's gonna be just chock full of gingerbread contest equivalents. They're gonna go pumpkin picking. They're gonna go apple picking. They're going to carve the pumpkins that they buy. 
they're going to go walk around in the fall leaves and step on the leaves and the leaves are gonna go crunch and it's gonna just be yes as for the rest of the plot i mean there's some like general chaos happening you know her sisters write that they're gonna come home for halloween this year even though they haven't been home in a few years but since it's their first halloween without their mom they want to spend it as a family and she's such an introvert and she already has this stranger who's encroaching in on her life and so she's overwhelmed but like not in too much of a way because i don't want my sister to like be bummed out while she reads this and there's like this other mystery though that's like in the woodwork of the house and in the belongings her mother left her at least i think that's how it's gonna go i haven't fully figured it out yet which is good because i only have like a month and a half to write this so like i said we're totally thriving oh let's give away one of the biggest plot spoilers well let's wrap it up in a little bit of mystery the main inspiration for this story is the hades and persephone mythos so take from that what you will. Enough of me just staring and chatting at the camera. The fire is dying, so I'm gonna try and <laughs> distract you from that. And I'm gonna pull you in and we're gonna go in and look at my Scribner file. Or maybe first I'll do the outro now while the fire still has a little bit of life. And then I'll just edit in the part where I go to do the Scribner file. And you will never know that that's what I did unless I include this clip in the video. This is my Scrivener file, and really quickly, just to give a little bit of background, the idea for this story came while I was in this very cottage last year in 2019, and I wrote about 30 pages of this story. Let's kind of just go down the list. First thing is I have the actual draft of the story. This book is for October. I took the pages that I was happy with from 2019, and I put them in here. It's about 16 pages it seems and the reason I only took 16 of the original 30 pages was because as I was writing it last year and I got to like page 25 or 26 I realized that something that had happened on page 13 I needed to shift it I needed our main character and the stranger that arrives at her door to be a little more open and honest with each other than I had originally had it and because there are so many secrets in this story I just felt like there were one too many big reveals so the night that this stranger arrives I wanted certain things to be a little more clear and upfront mainly the fact that this stranger who arrives is also a witch so that's my drafting section and then in the outline section I have my outline from 2019 the way I worked with this was as I was writing it I would gray out anything that I had actually included and so I could see where in the writing process I was and I think this is why I got messed up last year is because I tried to skip around but then of course as I skipped around I realized that the natural progression of the story hadn't, go hadn't gone where it should have gone. So I took the outline and I pasted it in here and I'm deleting stuff that I feel like is unnecessary and then I'm going to include stuff that changes because of the change I'm going to make and that's going to be my outline for 2020. I don't think I have anything in research yet. Uh, this is my character study section and basically all this is is I went and I, for all my main characters, I googled their physical attributes and I found pictures that just help me reference who they're supposed to be. So for example, Celeste is the youngest of the three daughters. She's a sky witch. I knew I wanted her to have raven black hair and kind of icy blue, almost gray eyes. And this is like one of the first pictures that came up and I was like, perfect. This character is called Matthew and he is the stranger that comes to our main character's door at night on the first night of the story. There's a possibility you might actually recognize this person. He's an actor named Matt Bomer. I named the character before I realized I was going to base his physical appearance at least off of Matt Bomer so that was just a happy accident but the specific reason I'm using this actor is because my sister thinks he's one of the most beautiful people in the entire world. Cassandra is the oldest of the three sisters. She is a sea witch. Why is this all like random? That's funny. Anyway whatever it doesn't matter. Um, and as for our main character Hecate or Kate I have such a clear picture of her in my mind that when I tried to google her hold on I just 
couldn't find anything that perfectly matched what I wanted, except there was this picture that was kind of a side profile that I was like, oh yeah, I can totally see her having this type of kitchen. Honestly, this picture is more for the kitchen than it is for the girl, but it's kind of of a similar vague idea. With the other characters, I didn't have them so clearly, which is why I needed the reference photos, but for our main character, she's kind of this blend of my sister and this person I have in my head. And so I didn't want any specific reference image of her. So that's the character study section. Now I have my bits and pieces section. Because I write chronologically, I like to have a separate file from the draft called my bits and pieces file that if I come up with a scene idea or a quote or something and I don't want to lose it, I just file it away into bits and pieces. And that way, it's not lost before I even get to the scene that it would refer to. In the traditions folder, because I wanted this book to be filled with Halloween activities, just like how Hallmark movies are filled with Christmas activities, um, I wanted to have a running list of all the things that they can do in the week leading up to Halloween that will feel kind of like the gingerbread contest. For recipes, this story is going to have a lot of food mentions. Food is a huge part of my and my sister's Halloween celebrations. Hold on, let me see if I can. I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of Half Baked Harvest, but this is the food blog I'm pulling a lot of inspiration of because I want to describe basically every meal that gets eaten in the week from, you know, October 24th to October 31st. And for the most part, it's going to be from this food blog just because my sister and I both love it and we just think the photos are fabulous. And also, it's nice to not have to come up with entire recipes. <laughs> World building section is just a little place that I have if I have a thought about how the covens work or about how the magic system works. Obviously, then I have a trash folder and then I have my inspiration folder, which can I just say, Pinterest is great. I have Pinterest for a lot of my stories, but Tumblr, Tumblr is where it is at. They make these aesthetic boards that just, ugh, I like just look at this and I just want to start writing immediately. Um, if you notice like kind of these weird interspersed pictures of people embracing, it's because like I said, one of the main story elements or homages or whatever is the Hades and Persephone story. So that's why there's that. If you make Pinterest boards for your stories, I also recommend going on Tumblr, typing in whatever aesthetic you want your story to have and get these awesome aesthetic boards. I mean, look at this. Does that not just get you so excited for the spooky time? Look at that color. Oh, I love it. But yeah, that's kind of the full breakdown of my Scribner file. Thank you so much for watching me ramble about this new story for a few minutes. I'm actually really looking forward to being very open about the whole writing process for this. My foot is falling asleep. Let me know if you actually have any specific questions about the story or if you have any suggestions. Maybe they will inadvertently sway the course of the story. It's possible. Again, I cannot stress how flimsy the plot is. It's gonna be so good though. It's gonna be fun, actually, is what I should say. Not good. <laughs> I shouldn't I shouldn't make the claim towards goodness, but funness, hopefully, hopefully, will be there somewhere in the woodwork. I think we're good. I think we got it. Yeah. I feel like I'm showing a little bit of boob, which I don't want to do that. The general plot idea, the general aesthetic idea. Oh, excuse you.